We are all familiar with EOC and its 24-7 watch over the parish, but there is another department that also works night and day to battle a daily threat of a different kind. Meet Steve Pavlovic of Mosquito Control, a local company contracted by the parish to monitor and decrease the activity of this biting problem. We have four or five different ways that we collect data, um, both with light traps, with something we call landing rates. We use a gravid trap that looks for uh, encephalitis mosquitoes. And then we also use customer service complaints or requests. And this information, this data is all combined uh, once we've combined that data, it's analyzed, and from there we prioritize where the trucks are going to go first, second, third, and fourth. Uh, we uh, issue reports to the parish on a weekly, monthly, and annual basis. The monitoring process begins at the source with traps and inspections. They are simple devices, but highly effective. This trap here is a unique trap, uh, a Fate Pierce trap. It is used, uh, the, basically the way it works is it has a timer mechanism on top. It uses a black light uh, and a fan motor uh, with, with a collection device on the bottom. And this is, this is hung in a tree or put in someone's backyard. Uh, and this is a temporary trap. It is used to collect uh, specific types of mosquitoes that are not attracted to, to normal light. Uh, a lot of the mosquitoes that you're looking at in this particular trap are going to be ones that would be container breeding mosquitoes uh, that don't have very far of a flight range. This is used to supplement a lot of our other uh, devices. Uh, this trap here is what we call a New Jersey light trap. It is the staple of our uh, surveillance techniques and basically it is a light, it's using light uh, through a light bulb to uh, attract the mosquitoes. It then has a fan motor that uh, once they've come into the area, the fan will blow the mosquitoes down this uh, cone and they will be collected into a, a small cup. Uh, this cup has a little uh, product in them that knocks the mosquitoes out. The, in, the inspector will then come by um, three days a week and pick up a mosquito sample and be brought back to the laboratory for identification. If you've seen one of these devices hanging from a tree in your neighborhood, it's actually a mosquito trap station, and they are strategically placed throughout 21 zones in the parish. From a neighbor's backyard to deep wooded areas, the devices are designed to trap a variety of species. This particular trap is one that collects uh, mosquitoes that we're concerned about for disease transmission, mm -hmm. and it is filled uh, about two or three inches deep with a water solution that is made from a hay infusion, fish emulsion. Uh, it has a very septic smell to it. So this septic smell uh, attracts the mosquitoes to come in. These are mosquitoes that are going to be most likely have already taken a blood meal and, and consequently would uh, be most likely to have some type of disease in them. Uh, those mosquitoes when they would come down in to land on the on the water surface because of the fan motor in this particular trap would then be sucked up into the, the net. Uh, they would be alive uh, the next morning when they would be picked up. Uh, these would be frozen uh, on dry ice by one of our inspectors, brought back to the laboratory, either tested in our own lab in St. Charles, or uh, we'll send them off to LSU for testing for disease. Um, so this is very important as far as finding out whether uh, there's disease activity uh, in the area in the mosquito population. And this goes for uh, West Nile virus as well as a lot of the other encephalitis diseases. This is a uh, another type of trap called the CDC trap uh, and again a this is a temporary trap it would hang in a tree uh, in someone's backyard or in the woods uh, we would then bait it with another container off to the side of dry ice. This particular trap collects a little bit more of a wide variety because it is baited with CO2 and it can be used uh, to determine problems in, in people's backyards. If we're not showing up uh, problems in that area, we'll use these uh, traps on a temporary basis in the person's backyard. After the collections, the real science begins in the lab with biological testing. A big part of my job as a biologist is to go around to different areas and collect mosquitoes uh, from different parts of the areas that we, uh, that we treat. And so um, right here we have, we have some mosquitoes from months. We have some from uh, from the flies, from different parts of Mississippi, and uh, 
it's important to get different mosquitoes from different areas because you want to make sure that, okay, well maybe the mosquitoes on the east bank of St. Charles are resist, you know, are susceptible to what we're spraying, but maybe the ones on the west bank aren't. So uh, we make sure that we get, get a nice variety of uh, different mosquitoes. The reason we do the bottle bioessay is to make sure that our chemicals that we're spraying at night are effective. And um, the way we do that is, well first we take some of the actual chemical that we use and we dilute it with acetone. And once we dilute it, we mix it up for about 20 or 30 minutes to make sure it's nice and, uh, you know, and uniform all the way through. We'll take it off the mixer and we will pipette exactly one milliliter into each bottle of the bioassay. So once you have the chemical into the bottle, the next step is to coat the bottle with the chemical. And as you roll the bottle, the acetone will evaporate, but what's left behind will be the chemical. And it takes a little while, but you continue to roll the bottle. You'll open up, open it up to allow air to get into it. And you'll continue to roll it. And this process lasts for, it takes about maybe 10 to 15 minutes per bottle to get it completely dry. And once it looks like it's completely dry and there's no, no more chemical and no more acetone left in it, the next step is to make sure it's super dry. Because if they're wet at all, the chemical, I mean, it won't work. It'll, uh, it'll, it'll get on the mosquitoes and it'll kill them instantly. So, we roll them back and forth for about 20 or 30 minutes just to make sure they're nice, good, perfectly dry. And once we have them nice and dry, we leave them out for another four or five hours just to make sure that, um, like I said, that uh, the mosquitoes aren't going to get in there and get, get wet. They want to be, they, we want it to be completely dry. We don't want any acetone in there, just the chemical. Um, after four or five hours after, after they have had time to sit, the next step is to take some of the mosquitoes and um, I don't know. But we go around to the different areas and we'll catch mosquitoes and uh, we'll test mosquitoes from the different areas. So these mosquitoes right here are actually from here in St. Charles Parish. So. We we'll actually, we'll collect them as larvae. And then when they hatch off into adults, that's when we we'll do our test. So the process of uh, getting mosquitoes out of here and into the bottles, uh, I use something called an aspirator. And it's basically a lung power, sucks up the mosquitoes and puts them in the bottle. <laughs> so once they're in here, We'll, uh, we basically, we time it, we, uh, every 15 minutes we'll come back and we'll check on them and we'll count how many are down and how many are up. And uh, what we're trying to do is uh, is find out the percentage that are dead after 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 45 minutes. And hopefully they're all dead and uh, that means it was a good test. And what we do is when we have the results, we'll compare these results with the results that we had last year with the same type of mosquitoes and also with the results from different parishes. And what that does is just make sure that these mosquitoes aren't any tougher or uh, anything than the mosquitoes uh, from elsewhere or from last year. Aside from the bottle bioessay, this is kind of a really contained, like very controlled lab test. We also do tests out in the field, which is to uh, make sure that the trucks, what they're spraying is actually working in practice. And these are the types of cages we use, basically what we do. Uh, using the same method, the, um, we'll use the aspirator, we'll put mosquitoes in these cages, we'll hang these cages out in the field um, at three different distances from where the truck's going to pass, 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 feet, and we'll hang them uh, 100 feet apart, so there'll be three at each distance, and um, basically we'll pass the truck, the chemical will pass through the cages, 30 minutes later we'll take the cages down, and then we'll just verify that okay, yeah, the chemical worked, um, we got a good kill. And um, it works not only in the bottles, but it also works in practice. And we'll do that with every parish, and we do that with every chemical. So it ends up being a lot of tests. Armed with this information, the trucks roll through your neighborhood, providing just the right amount of chemical to attack the specific species in your area. We train our own drivers uh, in-house, mm -hmm. uh, so they'll, they'll go through a training regiment with more experienced drivers as well as we'll bring them in and show them uh, videos uh, and go over a handbook on, on how to do this as well. Uh, basically what we have here is we have a computerized control box and the control box is 
correlated with a uh, moving map computer system. Between 2 and 22 to 24 miles an hour, uh, the, the truck will actually spray in whatever um, speed it is moving, it will put out the appropriate amount of insecticide. It's all computer controlled uh, and the drivers do not have any uh, control over uh, in the amount of chemical that comes out or, or you know, when it's coming out. Trapping, monitoring and spraying are part of mosquito control's daily routine. But you might not realize that during special events, the mosquito control trucks are usually the first to arrive. Well before the event begins, this special unit rolls through to provide a barrier against the pesky biters. And what it allows us to do is actually put a barrier uh, in the foliage or in grass for big events like football games or park events, those type of things. And what we'll do is we'll use it to uh, put a barrier and the mosquitoes will uh, be detracted from this chemical that we put on the ground. It allows us to do a large area, large square footage, and it really provides a lot of relief for uh, special activities. The event that we did for the Veterans Wall in St. Charles Parish uh, probably would have been a lot worse uh, with the mosquito population because we were having some activity out there uh, if we didn't have that piece of equipment. Battling mosquitoes with fans, lights, and plastic cups may seem to be a low-tech method, but mosquito control proves they have it all down to a science. With me is Stephen Pavlovich, an entomologist and assistant general manager for Mosquito Control Services, to talk some more about mosquitoes and how you can help control them. Thank you very much for coming in today, Stephen. Thank you for having me. So first things, a lot of people are very familiar with the trucks that make their rounds around the parish. Can you tell us a little bit about how that operation works and how often they make their rounds? Sure. Uh, as you saw in the video, our uh, program is based off of surveillance. We use a variety of different traps. Uh, we also use a variety of other surveillance techniques, uh, taking into account uh, disease surveillance as well as larval surveillance where our crews will go out into the field during the daytime. Uh, they'll check out areas such as ditches, uh, catch basins, wood, woodland pools to see what the breeding potential is out in St. Charles Parish. All of that data combined with something we call a landing rate. Uh, where an inspector will go out into the field, will stand there for a predetermined amount of time, uh, will allow the mosquitoes to land on them, will then either collect those mosquitoes or count them, uh, and then determine what the species of mosquito is. Uh, we compile that information with customer service requests or, or uh, requests from the parish. All that data is then compiled and determined where has the highest priority need uh, in the parish. And, and we prioritize those areas. Those areas will then be sprayed first, uh, and then so on and so forth. Uh, in addition to that, we do something uh, basically called maintenance spraying, which uh, will spray an area that just hasn't been done in a while. Um, so depending on how uh, much an area has need for that uh, spraying, uh, it may be as, as much as 10 days that, you, that you'll see the truck if it doesn't have a need, or if we've got encephalitis activity or a concern of encephalitis activity, it'll be a lot more frequent than that, uh, where if we have encephalitis activity in an area, we'll actually institute a program uh, where we'll do consecutive sprays over a three-night period. What can people do to help cut down the number of mosquitoes that they see in their own areas? One thing that residents can do is eliminate breeding sites around the home. And this can be from eliminating containers to filling in low spots around the yard. Anything that can hold water can potentially breed uh, mosquito larvae. And this can be something as small as a bottle cap uh, to as large as a swimming pool. Uh, uh, things that people need to watch out for are such things as, as bird baths, buckets, gutters, uh, kitty swimming pools that may be left throughout the yard. Uh, these things, as they sit over time, can collect uh, leaf material and other debris uh, and become very attractive to mosquitoes laying their eggs. Uh, either rinse these things out on a weekly basis, such as the bird baths, flush them out with fresh water, or remove them, and, and fill in any spots in the yard that may be uh, low and holding water. Uh, one other thing to watch out for is uh, leaky pipes. If, if a ho home has leaky pipes beneath the house or either in the yard, those areas can often be wet and breed mosquitoes. Okay, very good information. Some things that people may not think about when they think about um, having open water in their yards. Correct. Uh, does Mosquito Control offer any special services for residents that they can take advantage of? Uh, we offer a couple of things that, that residents may not know about. Uh, one thing that uh, you know, we want to tell people is that uh, residents can call our office and we'll come out and spray prior to a party. Uh, if a resident's having a, a 
a large gathering, a wedding, anything like that, we'll actually come out to their, their site, uh, we'll spray the yard, put a barrier material down to preclude mosquitoes from coming back into the area. Another thing that we do is we'll come out and inspect uh, the resident's yard for mosquito breeding, and if there's a, a long-term uh, breeding site that we're concerned about, we'll actually add uh, the mosquito fish uh, to that site. Okay, and what's the number for people? Uh, the number for mosquito control is 985-783-2417. Alrighty. So what are some problems that can be caused by mosquito bites? Uh, some of the problems that can be caused by mosquito bites uh, are just the allergic reaction to the mosquito bite itself. Uh, depending on the person, uh, people will have more or less of a reaction. Uh, you can have secondary infections because of that mosquito bite if you, you're itching it and actually putting some bacterial products into that area that you've itched. Uh, and then the diseases that mosquitoes transmit. Uh, mosquitoes transmit diseases to uh, humans as well as to uh, the wildlife and our pets. Uh, dog heartworm is one of the things that's being transmitted by mosquitoes. And then the, the large things that we need to be concerned about are such things as West Nile and the other encephalitides. Um, yeah, those, those are our big concern as far as disease transmission of mosquitoes. So very much worth it to protect yourself from uh, mosquito bites. Absolutely. Um, so we spoke a little bit about West Nile. Have we seen any West Nile in the parish this year? I know in, in, in past years we have. Uh, we haven't had any West Nile uh, in the parish this year. Uh, it's, it's early in the season. The, the peak season is really uh, August, September, and October for encephalitis, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't, shouldn't be vigilant in protecting ourselves against mosquito bites. Uh, we use a variety of testing techniques. We put out several traps looking for uh, encephalitis in the mosquito population as well as we monitor the bird population here in St. Charles Parish. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, certainly. Uh, we always encourage residents uh, to protect themselves when they're going to be exposed to mosquito bites. Uh, and they can do this by closing in the openings that mosquitoes can get into their house, repairing window screens, making sure that doors and windows uh, fit tightly, uh, trying to reduce the time that uh, they're out when mosquitoes are most active. And this is going to be during dusk and dawn. Uh, and then lastly, consider the use of re repellent when they're going to be exposed to mosquitoes at their peak. Okay, well thank you very much for coming in with us and educating us more about these little pesky critters. <laughs> thank you for having me.